Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Bushman. I'm here with Doug Heisel. And we are, uh, this is what we've decided to do is start doing some podcasts to try and help people learn the truth and better understand, better understand how to stand on their square. Uh, because we're hearing uh, from more and more people out there that are just literally getting rolled up into the system. And usually it's because they've already entered the system. Uh, they've given them jurisdiction, that meaning the courts that don't exist, et cetera. And once you are in their jurisdiction, it's difficult to get out. So it's easier to stay out than it is to get in and then get out. Yeah. And so, uh, plus there's so much information out there from different, so many different sources. And a lot of people are trying to extract money from people to try and uh, help them. And we're not asking for anything. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, support this platform uh, with a company that I represent called Taiki Precious Metals, uh, just to help fund some of the costs associated with it. But that's it. And you don't have to buy from us. You don't have to deal with us. Uh, but I simply mention that because they're they're willing to sponsor us, which is which is great for the for this you know for this venture. Uh, but the bottom line is, we're just trying to give you good information that has been tried and trusted and true. Uh, out there and uh, and uh, Doug, he has uh, spent 20 plus years involved in this, being tied up into the system and learning how to remove himself from their jurisdiction. And I've been at it for about five years with my head down studying the history of this country and uh, and learning uh, the truth uh, versus the reality. And so I guess that's pretty much it. But we're just going to try and help people. Uh, get to the truth, learn how to stand on the square and uh, and stay out of uh, the jurisdiction of the uh, of the corporations. And you'll understand that as we go through this. Doug, anything you want to add? No, not right at this point. Uh, I think you pretty much said it quite well. OK, so let me see if I can get this working. OK, so we're talking about the United States of America, the actual republic that we were founded to be and how it is supposed to be set up. So if you think about it, our rights come from God. In the Declaration of Independence, nothing was given to us. It was simply recognized that our rights are unalienable and they come from God. And then below that is we the people. And Doug, if you want to throw anything or add anything, just stop me and jump in. So if you think about it, if you look at our current situation out there, this might be surprising to a lot of people, that God gave us our rights, and he's at the very top of the, uh, of the chart uh, for very good reasons. And he always has been as far as the way our republic was founded. And right below that is we the people. So below that is the Constitution for the United States of America. This is the Constitution that was originally uh, ratif originally structured in 1787, ratified in 1789. Uh, and if you look at the current Constitution that we have, you'll see that it's in all capitalized letters. And where you see for was changed to of. So instead of the Constitution for the United States of America, it says of. And you'll also notice that United States of America, all of it is capitalized. In this case, United is lowercase. The reason right. for that is United States is a noun. And with a small U, United States, that's a verb. That is basic, basically 50 countries coming together and uniting under America or the United States of America. Uh, and so God is at the top. Then we, the people. And why would we be above the Constitution? Well, the Constitution is a public document that we, the people, created and ratified. And we gave it to what is supposed to be public servants, not public officials, public servants that are supposed to work on our behalf. We delegated our authority, our power to them via Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. Well, and that is what they're meant to follow. I'd like to I'd like to throw something in here. Please um, do. You know, first off, it's a republic that that we're guaranteed that with a republican form of government. And a republic 
you know, you hear people talking about a democracy uh, that has nothing to do with a democracy. The difference between a republic and a democracy is a democracy is mob rule in the beginning of communism. And a republic, your rights, everybody is created equal and your rights are individual and singular and not aggregate, meaning everybody has the same right, okay? Um, all of us. And the rights are given to us by God and recognized through the Constitution, which is a public trust. If our our country was set up as a trust. Our our offices, our public trust, the Constitution is a trust. And if you look at the Declaration of Independence, governments are instituted among men to protect the rights that God gave us. Okay. So those rights are part of the res of the trust or the or, or the property of the trust. So you, what you have is you have a trust document that was set up and each of the offices that were created are public trust. And it's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Of the people means the, the people were the grantors, okay, of the trust, all right? By the people, it means that each one of these public offices is a public trust. And for the people means that the people are the beneficiaries of that trust. So what happens in our country and the way that our founders set it up, we have public servants instead of public rulers. And we have public servants because even though we're all equal, the way that it's supposed to operate is the people that feel the need to serve, okay? They step down from their sovereignty and become public trustees with a fiduciary responsibility to protect our rights and do everything that benefits the people. And if it doesn't benefit the people, they're not supposed to do it. And the trust, the trust doctrine is based in the constitution which it it actually explains what each one of these offices are and it's their fiduciary duty to execute the duties of that office when they don't do it and they're getting a stipend or they're getting uh an emolument for being in that office and stepping down from their sovereignties for the time they're on the clock they don't have their own rights or their own opinions or whatever they have to act according to that trust document. And it's not a trust indenture, it's a trust by contract. So that's a contract between we the people and our so-called public trustees, our government. Okay. And so that's why in America, we're guaranteed a republic with a Republican form of government, meaning that each one of us has the same rights. So there's a thing that comes in called liberty of conscience, common cause and control. And what that means is that each one of us has a duty to protect every other one of us and the rights. So if we see somebody's rights being violated, our liberty of conscience says that that's something that's wrong. And the common cause means that if they violate their rights because that affects everybody, it's a common cause and we have to take control of the situation if we have the knowledge to do it. So, you know, that's how you can be a next friend and come in and help be the uh, counsel, a, a chosen a chosen counsel for one of your neighbors or one of your friends. The Republic is, is like a family and we all watch out for each other. And so there's certain things that are built into the Republic. So I, I just wanted to throw that in there now. Awesome. Thanks, Doug. So if you look at everything Doug just said, and if you look at this, I think anybody that looks at how this is supposed to be structured, something's not right. Okay? Because God's at the top, and then we, the people, are right below God. And then the Constitution, which is a public document that we the people we the people created, that we gave the public servants to follow. And they have an oath to that. And then you have all of the government, all of the man-made, everything that's done by man below us, below God, and even below the Constitution, that they're all uh, under oath to follow. But if you look at things today, I think most people 
if they really don't know anything, they would probably say, well, this is upside down because obviously God is under attack. It has been under attack um, for a very, very long time. Most people are familiar with separation of church and state. That was complete fraud. It was a complete distortion of Thomas Jefferson's letter to a Baptist, Baptist priest. But we don't see any, any, anything in our founding documents that talks about separation of church and state. The, the uh, Congress used to print the Bible and they used to hand it out to the schools and promote its use. The schools so if you look, be, I'm sorry. The schools used to be in, in the towns and townships. The church was the schools during the week. And then on the weekends or, you know, on Sundays, it was church. But it was, it was all intertwined. You know, when when our, our people came over here, our founders, they came over here through religious persecution and through, you know, the Roman Catholic Church. They came to get away from that. And they actually set this up in the Virginia Declaration of Rights and the Virginia Constitution as a Christian nation. People don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. And so... You know, everything with the founders, they were Anglo-Saxons. They brought the common law over here. And there's and the maxims of law. And, and one of the maxims of law is you control what you create. And the other maxim of law is you only control what you create. Well, God created man, so we're under God's law. You know, God's law, you know, mandates what we do. I mean, you can't really uh, go against gravity and jump off of... Uh, building and you're going to hit the ground sooner or later you know uh you know so god's law god created us and so we're, we're bound by god's law but we created the constitution and we created the instruments of government so the government works for us we control that we're supposed to control that the problem is, is we've been dumbed down and it's been it's been done on purpose and they've been trying to destroy this nation ever since it was formed, okay? Because it was formed as such a strong and positive nation under God. Okay, I thought I wanted to throw in there. No, I appreciate it. And and to add to that, um, you know, Thomas Jefferson's letter to a Baptist priest talking about the wall of separation between church and state, he was not talking about keeping God out of government or out of schools or out of the public square. He was talking about keeping the government out of our business and out of God away from that they have nothing they have no business being in most of what they're involved in uh and again you can read article one section eight uh and this includes the general welfare clause i don't remember what section it was in the federalist papers but they were talking about the general welfare clause and they made it clear that the general welfare clause cannot extend beyond the 19 enumerated powers in article one section eight because if it did we would no longer have a limited government, and yet they abuse that on a regular basis. The reason they abuse it is because we, the people, do nothing about it, and that's where we're at today. If we want to save our country, because we're on the end of the road, is our belief. Yeah, we're going to lose everything that uh, we've inherited. Yeah. So the next thing that's really important to understand is that there's two of everything. People think of having 50 states. In this country, we don't have 50 states. We have 100 states. We have 50 states that are in the republic, and then we have 50 states that are under the corporation. The corporation is not the republic. Uh, the republic, many years ago, before the end of the Civil War, was shoved aside. Even Lincoln, in his uh, in his emancip Emancipation Proclamation, uses the term executive government. He's yeah. talking about the beginnings of the corporation. Because when the South walked out, there was no quorum. So there was no way to move forward lawfully. Uh, and so as we move down the road and things continue to progress towards that corporate side that we'll get into, uh, there, there is still, to this day, two of everything. And that's what we're going to get into here. Doug, you want to go over this? Well, the executive government, when... Number one, Lincoln was a bar member. He couldn't hold the office of president. He was put in there by the bankers. And when he created the executive government, it did away with the separation of powers that we were guaranteed because everything became the executive. 
So, you know, the judicial was under the executive. The legislature was under the executive. There wasn't a legislative branch, an executive branch, and a judicial branch anymore. Under the executive government, it was all under the executive or the CEO. And that's where Tom was saying, like, the corporation began right there. And what happened was they killed Lincoln. He put us under martial law under uh, General Order 100, the library code. Okay. And the attorneys or the barristers or whatever you want to call them, uh, the, the BARF Association was the conquering army and they usurped everything from our republic and turned it into a corporation and basically straight tyranny. It, it, the BARF Association comes from England, Britain, and uh, you know they, that was the one way of taking back control over our country, and they just tightened it down ever since then. I mean, all the way up into uh, 1933, where they took the substance from our monetary system. But we'll go ahead and get into that a little bit later. That's yeah, all. and so what Doug is talking about. And what we're talking about is the fact that there's two of everything. If you look at property, for example, or land, one of the unique things about America is that we're the only country out there that can actually have a Lodeo title, which is the highest, the highest uh, level of title that you can have. So you don't have to pay any homage to any king. You can own that land. It's yours. And nobody can do anything with it unless you okay it. But if you look at, if you look at real estate, which is what most people refer to when they're talking about property. Real estate is actually the corporate overlay of property. Again, everything you'll see is a sleight of hand. If you look at real money, and this is even listed in the Constitution, it only states that gold and silver can be minted as money. But if you look at what we're dealing with today and what you might have in your pocket or your purse is a Federal Reserve note. That is colorable meaning that it's only in perception. That's nothing more than like monopoly money that is a piece of paper with ink on it. And it only has the value that they put on there, whether it's $10 or $50 or a hundred dollar bill, if there's even such a thing out there anymore, a thousand dollar bill, I should say, but it has no value. It's called fiat. It's only what they say it is. And think about this. It's only backed by the full faith and credit of the United States, not the United States of America, the United States. It's important to realize the differentiation of many of these things. The United States, all capitalized, is the corporation. The United States of America, upper lower case, is the republic. So if you're talking about uh, lawful, that's what the republic, that's common law, and if you hear the term legal, that's become accepted as law, but it's not. Legal no, is the corporation. That's contractual. The difference, yes. between, the difference between legal and lawful is legal is contractual. Lawful is constitution. It's full of law. The only law that there really is is the law that we laid down, declared, and ratified through the constitution or through that trust document that we were talking about. What happened was in 33, well, they, well, in, in 1913, they passed the Federal Reserve Act. And um, used to be you could turn in Federal Reserve notes for gold. Okay. And so they had a whole bunch of these banksters and these crooks that depleted the gold that the United States of America had. And the United States Corporation uh, in 1933, committed treason by removing the substance from our monetary system. And when they did that, it revenued us into a territorial jurisdiction, which is the overlay that they did over the actual land. And that came in, you know, later on, they, they perfected it with the zoning improvement plan, which is a zip code. But they made Washington, D.C. In the, in the Organic Act of 1871, and then they created the United States Corporation to provide 19 essential services to the people until the people could reconstruct 
their republics, restore their republics that had been demolished through the acts of Lincoln in the Civil War. And since that never happened, and since people were dumbed down by this time, Rockefellers took over the school system. I mean, we can go on and on and on. But what they did was, you know, around the same time, they created the birth certificate system. And uh, they had a new deal that was created with the corporation and Roosevelt. And the new deal was they were supposed to put uh, put in a um, uh, investment, okay, in into every child's life. And that investment was a closed investment. I know that my birth certificate is a medical services company. I mean, medical services, that supplies everything from, you know, the medication that you have to hospitals to whatever. So I'm 64. So, you know, for 64 years, they made an investment through Fidelity into a closed investment, meaning nobody else could invest in it and through the birth certificate uh, system. And, you know, we couldn't, the investment was theirs. So we didn't have a right to the investment, but we had a right to all of the returns. So the new deal was everything in our life was supposed to be prepaid. They took the gold and removed it from our monetary system. And that took our sovereignty because in order to be sovereign, you have to have sovereign money, which is gold and silver, according to our constitution and law. You have to have so uh, sovereign law. And that's based on substance and you had to have a sovereign military well we have not neither we've our, our department of defense is a corporation the military is is incorporated everything within our our so-called country that we believe is our country is nothing but private corporations we don't have a government there is no government right now okay there is no legitimate government there is no legitimate republics except for the ones that were at this time attempting to restore and that takes the people and it, the, for the people to be knowledgeable and be able to restore it the people have to know the truth and have to be able to stand upon that truth and operate on their square which exists in on the land in the constitutional republic because they can't remove you from that it's guaranteed to you so, you know, what they did was they took all of the substance from our, mo our monetary system, which impaired all of the contracts, because in order to have a contract, you know, you have to have substance for substance. So there was no more contracts and they, they codified the law merchant. OK, the, the, all, everything is dealt with now is commercial instruments. Not there is no money. Okay? You've never been paid for anything in your life. Most of you unless you lived in a republic and dealt with gold and silver or precious metals, you know, and that's what we're going to be going back to if we're going to survive. Um, they took not only the, the monetary system, but they made a sink port out of Washington, D.C. And the Organic Act changed the definition of this state and this state to represent Washington, D.C. So when you look in the codes and you said, well, in this state, you know, it, this right here constitutes a crime or in this state, you have to pay these taxes. Well, that's in Washington, D.C. And Congress has full control over Washington, D.C. So it's it's all a game. OK, it's a word game. It's wordsmithing. And all of these liars, I mean, lawyers are are what's taking control and assert our lawful government and replaced it with private corporations and fascism and tyranny. So I yield. Yeah, and that's that's why it's so important to know this. And believe me, it's not rocket science. It may seem overwhelming if this is the first time you've been exposed to it. There's many people out there that are trying to figure it out. They've been exposed to some of this. And the reason Doug and I decided to do this is because there's so much half truth. There's so many half truths uh, that um, we just, you know, we're not out to make any money. We're just out to help people. And I'm a student. Doug's been at this for a lot longer than I have. Uh, I'm no expert. I think some of the problems, if you remember uh, the last, you know, almost five years of COVID, the supposed, supposed experts are some of the biggest problems out there. Uh, there's just so much uh, uh, mistruths and pure lies 
that it uh, has, has, has really just turned this country upside down even more so than it was prior to COVID. So this yeah, is, it, this is, it was done on purpose. I mean, the, this whole thing was, was set up and, and done on purpose. I mean, look, look up human being in one of their dictionaries and you'll see it's a monster. Okay. God created man. Okay. And a man with a womb, a womb man. Okay. God created man and mankind. But yet you have people talking about, well, I'm human. Well, wait a minute. I'm not human. Okay. Hue means color of man. Hue man. Color of man. That when you have something that's colorable or color of, it's not the real thing. It's memorex. It's fake. Just like the all capital name on your birth certificate. Okay. You know, you went down the birth canal. Okay. That's water. You were docked because the doctor was there. You were docked in the county and you're considered a vessel flying the United States flag in commerce. You're something, you're chattel, you're, you, you belong to the corporation and you have ever since your mom gave you up as an informant. Go look on the birth certificate. Your mom gave you up as an informant. Okay, your mom informed them of a new asset that came into their corporation because you're an asset of that corporation. So, I mean, and I know this probably sounds, you know, crazy to everybody, but that's how they did it. That's how they put you under maritime law as a fiction. Okay, they don't have any control over we the people, over mankind. You control what you create. God created mankind. God created man. Okay, they created you, man, color of man. You know how they did that? Well, I'm white. Well, I'm black. Well, I'm a Mexican. I'm a Chinaman. You know, all these different races, all these different colors, hues of man. Okay, that's colorable. That placed you into a colorable jurisdiction. Okay, they ask you, well, well, well what color are you or what race are you? Well, I don't know. I don't run races. Okay, I'm a man. And there's not anything they can say about you being a man. I can whip out my dick and show everybody, yeah, I'm a man. Okay, there's only two sexes. So you look between your legs and see what you got. And, you know, either a man or a man with a womb. A womb man. And by, you know, creating all these different uh, races and categories, they colored us. And they've divided us based upon that colorable hue man and took us out of mankind and out of out of God's creation by doing that. Uh, are you? Yeah, and, and, and you know, some of this may sound um, <clears throat> just really hard to believe. Uh, yeah, off the wall. <laughs> yeah, off, off the wall. But you, when you start learning who is involved and who's behind it, and many of those, you would be shocked to know who they are. It, it is true. I mean, I think last I heard there was 152 uh, genders. Uh, like Doug just said, there's a man and a woman. That's all God created. Uh, and, uh, and there is nothing else. And now they have, I don't know if the Supreme Court passed the law or where it came from, but now you can put an X on your, on your child's birth certificate, which to me is just insanity, uh, which to me proves that there's something wrong with the parents the mom or dad uh, because i can't imagine that somebody would do that to their child um well, i heard about i heard about bro <laughs> i'm still in disbelief about this but they've got a new category called furries all right and they're putting litter boxes in the school bathrooms so these furries can defecate in them. all right if my kid came home and told me hey i'm a cat <laughs> right okay you're a cat I, I, hey, there's a cat bed over in the corner. Cats sleep in the garage. Here's your litter box, and you're going to eat canned cat food until you decide that you're human again, or a, a man or a woman again. You know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous, bro. I mean, yeah. can you imagine your kid coming home and telling you, "Man, I'm a cat." Come on. And well, and the, and the sad thing about it is, it, it is pure child abuse. Uh, and, yeah. and worse. But the well, sad it's thing mental, is, it's mental torture, homeboy. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. 
And you know what? A lot of these things are happening at school and they're not telling the parents. Right. So the kid might come home and act differently at home. But when he goes to school, he's he's a completely different entity. And if that isn't something that could cause major uh, mental issues at a young age, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, we're just at a point where we look at society anymore. And I, I don't think I'm any better than anybody else. I'm just a man. Uh, I'm flawed in the eyes of God like the rest of us. But these are just things that need to uh, be stopped. And the only way that we're going to stop them is with we the people. As our founder said, <clears throat> only a well-instructed society will remain a free society. And it's nobody's fault that they've been brainwashed and dummied down because it's been purposeful. This has all been by design and for a long, long time, like, like we've talked, you know, before the end of the Civil War, we, there are many things we could get into. But the bottom line is this has been going on for a very, very long time. And it's, it's purposeful. It's by design. It's a plan. And the goal is, is to roll us into a one world border. We're not even a country technically cons uh, considering we have no borders anymore. So this is a wake up call to Americans. And we're just trying to, we're just trying to, these are all things that you can go research yourself and you can vet them. And you'll see for yourself what we're saying is true. And this is what Doug was talking about with the birth certificate. If you go look at your birth certificate, you'll see that it's an all capitalized name. There's actually two. There's the birth certificate and there's a certificate of live birth. Heard, one yeah. of them is in cursive writing when you were born. And the other one is all capitalized. And you'll see your birth date. You'll see your registered date, which is like Doug is talking about. Your mother gave you over to the state. Right. This is when before all of that happened, you didn't we didn't have anything called child protective services. But once now we have children being given to the state as an asset. Right. Uh, now we have child protective services because the state owns those children, technically. They can come and take them away. And we hear that all the time. People are dealing with this kind of stuff all the time. And many entities of child protective services are very involved in child trafficking. So th this this really gets very dark. But and the state of this even list... The, this even, the, even the name parents, okay? Your mom informed them of the new asset that was brought into the world for the corporation. And they are the pair that the corporation rents, pay rent for that child to raise that child as long as they raise the child according to what the state deems necessary or deems appropriate. <laughs> and when they don't, they take that child and give them to another pair that they rent, okay, in that CPS and Child Protective Services that actually pay people to take control of these child, these children. And they end up, like you said, most of them end up being trafficked. But the, even the word parents, I mean, if you look at it, that's a pair they are in. And sometimes it's not even a pair. And if it is, sometimes it's that LBGTQ, that RSFUT, never mind. Yeah, but it all it's all one and the same. This is this is yeah. nothing nothing we're talking about is really in its only in its own separate area. This is no, it's all, all together. It's all, it's all together. Goes together. That's right. Everything. And, 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 you know, over time, you'll learn that the financial system, the education system, the healthcare care system, uh, all, you know, the, the political system, all of these things are wrapped together. And, and, and you find, as you look into it, all the same people, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Vatican, the British Crown, uh, the Committee of 300, all of these entities keep coming up because they're all involved and they're all controlled, just as Congress is controlled and owned. And they are also a private corporation. So people think we have a Republican and Democratic party. No, that's like white and black. This is just a way to keep people, you know, arguing and divided over something uh, so they can be controlled by the very uh, controllers that want to control us and enslave us as they have done. This is, this is, there's no separation here. It's all one. No, they're two wings on the same dirty bird. They are. Absolutely. And for example, when you're talking about a live man or woman, like Doug was just talking about, there's there's the live man and woman, right? Of flesh and blood. The God that have rights. That have, have rights. That have rights that are enforceable. Yep. 
And then you have bar attorneys. British accreditation registry is what the bar stands for. Their alignment is with the British crown. They are foreign agents operating on American soil. When I call them go, the Barf Association because there's nothing but puke that comes out of their mouth. That's correct. And and uh, there's when they go to law school, they don't study law. They study administrative procedure, statutes Practice. and codes. Yeah. Roman civil law is what statutes, codes, ordinance, and rules is. And that was the in code. 1940. Go ahead, Doug. The code. The code. You hear code. Okay, that's a secret, you know. It's in Moore's code, or, or you know what I mean? That, that's supposed to be something that's hidden. And we had our Constitution, and we had lawful statutes at large that was created through a lawful legislature in the legislative branch of the Republic, okay? And now you've got Roman civil law that you'll go into a court and they'll say, well, the Constitution doesn't apply here. Why? Because they're wearing a black robe from the Black Pope to the Vatican, which is controlling all of our schools and everything else. The tri-city state, you had the Vatican, you have the city of London, and then you have Washington, D.C. that's a military arm for all of that. So everything that we've been led to believe is true and is uh, legitimate is a lie. And so, I mean, that's the whole idea behind um, talking to you about this stuff, because you can go look it up. When they, when they brought in, I think in California, it was 1870, what was it, 1872? It was, I believe it was 1872, 1873, that they brought in the Code of Civil Procedure. When they brought in the Code of Civil Procedure, when they brought in the Code of Civil Procedure, they changed the fundamental principles of our justice system. And so mm -hmm. you have private administrative tribunals for profit instead of, you know, uh, Article Three courts or justice courts for the people where you have a right to a trial by a jury of your peers not a jury trial there's a difference between a, uh, uh, a trial by a jury of your peers and a jury trial and these are the little subtle subtlety, subtleties I don't know how you say it but uh, they're subtle and what what they're wordsmithing they've changed a few things in the in the wording and they mean totally different things and so we've been taught one thing, but we have a right to another. And so to stand on your square means to exercise your rights in a manner which support uh, and defend your rights that God gave you, because only God can take those from you. No, no other man can. And no other people in the Republic can, because we, the people, created the instruments of government, so we control that, not them. They work for us. We don't, they don't lord over us, but we've allowed them to do this with such impunity that they believe that they have a right to it and they have it coming. And that's why we're headed into the tyranny that we're headed into now. And they're not making any secret about it. If we don't do something now, if we don't learn this stuff and, and share it with others so that people comprehend what's going on out there, you don't understand it because when a cop or one of these uh, black robe cross dressers they call courts, hey, do you understand me? That means do you stand under my authority? But they never taught you that, did they? No, I don't understand you, and or I don't understand under I don't stand under anything, and I don't even comprehend what's coming out of your mouth because it's a foreign language called legalese. Look it up. And you have a right to an interpreter. So I, I, I you, bro. Yeah. And I mean, uh, if you look at your Sixth Amendment at the very bottom of the Sixth Amendment, uh, we all have a right to assisted counsel. Uh, you don't need to hire a bar attorney. A bar attorney is not operating on your behalf. They just aren't. Um, and when you hire a bar attorney, you basically just put the sheep, uh, the wolf in charge of the sheep. And you're the sheep and you don't even know it. And they right. are officers you know, of the court. You become and interestingly, 
Say that again, Doc. You become an imbecile. That's uh, right. Someone that someone that can't speak for themselves because a bar attorney could only uh, represent corporations, dead entities, or imbeciles, people that can't speak for themselves. So by taking a bar attorney, you're admitting to being an imbecile. So, you know, all the people that are in prison right now, most of them have uh, volunteered to go there. You know, through their actions, the people that have all of these judgments against them and everything else, you volunteered into that. Most of them by hiring, hiring a bar fraternity. Are you? Yeah, and this, this is why we're just talking about this, because the minute you comply with their demands, you've given them authority. And these are private corporations. You're going to find they have no authority except what we give them. Uh, and we cannot give up our rights. A right cannot be converted into a crime, and it cannot be converted into a privilege. Yeah, right. you cannot it, be it is God given. exercising a right. That's right. And the Bill of Rights, which is the first 10 amendments in the Constitution, pretty much about the only valid ones. That's, that is just a sampling of, the, of, of our God-given rights. It, you won't find in the Bill of Rights that you have a right to get married, and you don't need a license to get married. That's not how it used to be done. But, that, but you still have that right. So the Bill of Rights are just a sampling of, of what God gave us. And you can go to Genesis 126, 128. That's where your rights are, are labeled in the Bible. And you can go to Genesis 2, 7. And that's where your status as man and woman come from. Well, and they all that, all of them. Not only that, but God is the one that created the institution of marriage. Okay. And so you don't have to get a license. When you get a license, you're going to a corporation and asking that corporation to um, acknowledge your status as married, a married couple or man and wife. But you don't marry each other through that licensing agency and the way that they have it set up. Both of you marry the state. So the state has an interest in anything that's created through that marriage, whether it be a business or a child. You know, that's just the way that it is. You can get married by going out and making a covenant of marriage and a declaration of marriage and a contract between you and your significant other and um, before God, consecrate it before God, you know, and, and that's it. All you have to do is, is do it that way. Write it out, put your bloody thumbprint on it, sign it, and, uh, you know, go before God and ask for the blessing on that contract. And that's it. Write it in your Bible. It becomes a public record after that. Write it in a book. It becomes a public record after that, a lawful record. Nobody can tell you that you have to do it a certain way. You have to do it before God. That's what you know, it is. And you don't need a license because you don't need permission from anybody, right? No. Your Fifth Amendment, life, liberty, and property. Your labor is part of your property. Uh, you can live your life however you choose to live. And as long as you don't violate somebody's rights or their property, there is no crime. Right. And how many times if you've ever looked at a court case where it says the United States versus or the state of Ohio or the state of Texas or the state of California versus? Well, those are corporations. They're fictional. Corporations are fictional. They only exist on paper and they cannot be harmed or injured. So that's all a fiction, but nobody knows it. So therefore they succumb to it. Yep. Did you want to, do you want to add something, Doug? No, I just, you know, what, what it is is people have been programmed into certain things. And so they don't really comprehend just who and what they are. All right. And so, you know, it, it, it depends on who and what you are as to what you can do. If you believe that, you know what, you're a child of God and you're down here, you're having an experience as a man or a woman and you're following God's law, then you don't have to go to anybody else. I mean, if you go get married through the church, which is a 501c3 corporation, all right. What can a corporation make? 
Anything that's not corporate, no. So even your marriage becomes corporate after that, you know? And it, it's all BS. If you want to be with somebody, then that's on you to declare that. It's on you to contract with that, that man or that woman before God. And that's all you need. That and the love and the uh, intention to be married. You know, and in those type of marriages, there is no divorce. You know, you can't run out to a bar fraternity and undo the marriage because you did it before God. And it means that much more. So that's the way and I the only reason The only reason that somebody does that, by the way, is because most people don't know this. And so they get a license, which is permission. Anytime you get a license or permit, it's permission. You're dealing with a corporation. So the only reason you're dealing with a bar attorney when you get divorced is because you're trying to separate out of the corporation. And they have a, they have a vested interest in that marriage uh, yeah. because you're in the corporation. And if you have children, you know, they've, they've, uh, they've contracted and, and given in 1933, all of our future labor is collateral to the corporation so that they can print as much fiat, fake colorable money as they, as they want. Because they've, they've enslaved all of us and our land, by the way. Yep. Well, so this I, I've taken my land. I've land patented it because that's in, in America. That's the only way that uh, land is uh, given is granted or assigned. So I updated the land patent as an assignee. My marriage is between me and my significant other and God. Okay, I don't need anything else. I didn't. I don't need anybody's permission other than hers. So, you know, I'm not going to be involved in their deceit or their uh, corporation or any of that crap. We don't have to. We have a right to a Republican form of government. We've been divided for so long through all of this BS. Okay. I mean, down to the wordsmithing, down to the different races. I mean, to the different, uh, not what'd you say, 900 different genders, bro? Uh, 150 is what I, okay. what I've last I heard. That was quite a while. Ago. Okay. We may you be know, at 900 I, by now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it goes up daily. But I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to participate in their crap. Okay. God created us so God controls us. But if we allow them to utilize the systems that they've created and we place ourselves into those systems through our actions or inactions, and what I mean by inactions is by not doing anything to take us out of those systems, then we become a part of something that's not real. And so since it's not real, we're not real. We become a fiction and exist on paper only. So, you know, they do what they want with us and hold the man or the woman as a surety for what the paper does you know i mean if you look at um a traffic ticket well the traffic ticket has your all capital letter name on it the all capital letter names on the birth certificate so they're talking about the birth, birth certificate so why don't you tell them well i don't know how this all capital letter entity was out there careening in traffic or driving a motor vehicle or anything else, I keep them in a drawer that's locked tightly. You want me to go get them for you? Here's your defendant. I mean, that that's for real. That's the way that they're doing things, but none of us have ever been taught about it. None of us, it's never been explained to us. You know, we've been taught in school to be good little taxpayers and good little citizens. And there's a crop of us born each and every day. So, you know, on, on the on the slave plantation, you know, they're coming up all the time. And we're getting fleeced like sheep all the time. You know, we're chattel to them. And that's how they view us. And that's how we view ourselves mostly. Until you really comprehend what's going on in your life and going on in the world around you, you can't really deal with it. And I know that what Tom and I are saying sounds so way out there, but you can actually go look this stuff up, research it, you know? 
most people don't take the time to even listen. I mean, we try to keep this down to an hour because most people's attention span are about 15 minutes. Speaking of that, we're at 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, we're 10 minutes too, bro. Yeah. So and, go ahead and uh, go yeah, ahead. And we'll, we'll, I, we'll end it here, Doug, and then we'll take, we'll take off on the next one from here, okay. if that's okay with you. But this no, is... That's, that's fine with me. I, I would rather... I would rather try to explain this, you know, I don't know uh, how much easier we can explain it. I agree. I mean, this is basically, if anybody that has a third grade education can comprehend what it is that we're saying. And, you know, anybody that has a high school education can actually go and research what we're saying. And with that state of mind that what we're saying is true, you can find the evidence that backs everything that we're seeing up. And, then and there's we, little things. Yeah, there's little there's little things you can do. I'll give you an example because as you see at the bottom, it says all it all depends on which side you want to live on. You know, we have been enslaved for so long. It's more difficult uh to learn uh what the lies are and then unlearn the lies and learn the truth than it is to just learn the truth from you know being born and going through a proper educational system. And when you graduate high school, whether you go to college or grad school or anything else, which quite frankly, I wouldn't even do today based on what I know, um, you will know what you need to know to actually live your life the way you wanna live it. It will just be part of you. It'll be running through your, your veins. But unfortunately, because of their evil design, because truly when you learn, when you look into it, you'll find out it is evil. And there's nothing about it that is for our benefit at all. As a matter of fact, it gets far worse if we lose this, this war that's going on to retake our republic or roll into the one world order. It becomes very clear that people have to make a decision. Do I want to be free and have control over my body and my life? Or do I want to allow somebody else to enslave me where I have no freedom and I have no control? And whatever I do have is nothing but a perception. But I'll give you one small thing that you can do just to um, test out one thing as to whether, you know, you believe there's this physical reality and this legal fiction. The post office everybody goes to on occasion. When you go to the post office next time, take some time to look around and you'll see a building. That's the corporation. Outside of that building in the parking lot, most likely you're going to see a couple uh, blue mailboxes. That's the Republic. When I mail a letter, I put a sticker on it. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I, I can grab it if necessary, but it says like out, uh, first class, first class mail um, outside the United States and then something else. And I can't remember. I just don't pay attention. Without the United States. Without the United States, exactly. So what I do is I put a two cent stamp in the upper right corner and then I take that small little uh, label that I created and I butt it up. The right side butts up to the, um, to the stamp, the two cent stamp. And when I mail it, I go to the blue box outside the post office building and it gets delivered for two cents. And what are stamps now? I think I just heard they're going up to 76, 76 cents a piece. Hey, don't you write your name across it and then put a thumb, red thumbprint over it? You know, I have not done that, Doug. I put my my uh, address as normal care of my address, and then in the and then I put the zip code in brackets. On the left side, I actually made stickers so I don't have to write it all the time. And yeah. then on the right side, I just put the label and the two set stamp over on the right like normal. But I haven't uh, I haven't done that. I have I think I've heard that, but I haven't done it. Is that what yeah, you? Yeah, if you. If you write your name at, at an angle across the stamp and then take a red ink pad and use your seal and, and, and your right thumbprint is considered your seal in the Republic and put it across the stamp, what you're doing is you're canceling the stamp as a postmaster. Okay. So, you know, um, you're acting in that capacity, which you're allowed to do. I, I have read that. I, I will try that. See, these are the things that you learn 
when you encircle yourself with other people that have been learning the truth, like I said before, Doug's been at this for, gosh, I don't know, are you approaching 30 years, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. And I've been at it for five. I've been awake for 17, 18 years digging. But as far as learning, you know, the history of this country and law and all that kind of stuff, uh, about five years. And I can tell you what I have learned is that it's not rocket science. We were, you know, we've been encapsulated into this system where we think bar attorneys actually know the law when in fact they don't know anything about the law. No. The supreme law of the land, if you read Article 6, Section 2 and 3 in the Constitution, it makes it very clear, quote unquote, supreme law of the land is what the Constitution is. It's what we gave them that they had to follow. And the oath is right there in Article 6, Section 2 and 3, that they take an oath to all of them, any public official. And if a public official isn't under an oath, they're supposed to be working on a superior's oath. What we're finding is many of these people aren't under oath. No. And why would they be? They're private corporations. They're private corporations, so they don't have an oath. And if most of the oaths, if you get a copy of them, are they pledge to the corporation to support and uphold and defend the corporation, not the Constitution in its organic state. And, you know, the difference between that is, you know, like I said, you know, the, the constitutions in, in our country was set up as a trust, okay? And our rights were one of the things or what they call the res of that trust or property and the collateral of that trust, what's, what's in the trust. And that's, our rights are supposed to be protected by each and everybody, including ourselves. We can't, you know, allow somebody to violate another another man or woman's rights. If we do, we might be next. That's where liberty of conscience and common cause comes in, and you have a right and a duty to take control of that situation if you have the knowledge. And so that's what Tom and I are trying to do is we're trying to impart that knowledge on everybody out there that is open to being free and willing to stand up and do their part. And I mean, because it's it's we the people, we the people created it, we the people control it. But we've allowed these other people, these other fictions, these private corporations to take control of what we inherited. And if we don't stand up real soon and, and comprehend what the truth is, like what Tom and I are trying to impart to everybody, then we're going to lose everything and we're going to be in a world that it's not going to be a very pleasant place to be in because we're going to own nothing. And they say we're going to be happy. Well, I'm not going to be happy. I, you know, I'll die on my feet before I live on my knees. And that's just the way that it is. And, I, you know, they had, they had something called the American dream. Well, they also had something called the American spirit. The American spirit lives in our hearts. And the American dream lives in our hearts. Our heads but we've been programmed into this nightmare that they have out there now and think it's our country it's not it's one giant conglomerate of corporations that are profiting off of the people instead of a constitutional republic that is protecting the people that's the difference between what we have and what we could have so the people need to stand up and exercise their God-given rights in a manner that supports and defends and upholds the Republic and, you know, what we were guaranteed and what we inherited instead of laying back and waiting for somebody on a, on a white horse to come and save us. Because if you're looking for a savior, well, you better get on your knees and pray to God and Jesus Christ, or you better look in the mirror. Because that's the only people that are going to save you. One minute. I you? Yeah, and 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 truly, um, that that is just that is just the uh, the fact. We the people have been um, made to be fearful. Everything you hear on the news is propaganda. It's all controlled by the cabal and the deep state. I'm sure you've heard those terms. 98 point something of all media is owned and controlled by the controllers, the cabal, right? So it's all scripted. And if you pay attention, you'll see it out there. It's all scripted. 
You can tell what they're pushing. And the companies uh, that they control and own produce the textbooks that they give to the schools to teach the kids. It's not because the teachers know history or anything else. They're told what they're going to teach out of and the test that they're going to give. Common Core is uh, a, a result of a creation by the United Nations to dummy down our kids and make them easily controlled so they're more easily rolled into the one world order. Where you live in 15-minute cities, you eat bugs, you own nothing, like Doug said, and you're supposedly going to be happy. This is this is where they're taking us, and this is not, you know. But, you know, people will say, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to stand on my square because I work so hard for what I have, and I don't want to put it at risk. The reality of it is, you, again, you can research this. You don't own anything. You just think you do. If you bought a car, signed the paperwork, you gave that car to the state, and you are leasing that car. That's why they're charging you for uh, license stickers uh, every year and res uh, registration, all of these things, because that is your rent, your lease payment to them in order to drive your call, your car. And I'm not a driver, I'm a traveler. Again, if you look at this list, you see there's a big difference. It's the and same with only, your home. Not when only that, sign, yeah. If, if you go look at your deed, you're going to see you're a tenant, okay? And and that means that you're renting that that real estate. And the reason they call it real estate instead of real property is estates can be taxed. So what you've done is you've gone down and you've got something that has an APN number. That APN number it stands for the assessor's parcel number. So that's never going to be Doug's parcel number or Tom's parcel number, it's always gonna to belong to the assessor because when they took the substance from our monetary system, they went down and did a, a declaration of interdependence. All the governors did at the White House and pledged all the property and future labor of the people towards the national debt. So you don't own anything. The state has a claim on it and it's a false claim. It was done through fraud. And it's a system of constructive fraud, and fraud vitiates everything and everything it touches. So, go ahead. Yeah. So, it's all a trick. Everything is a trick. It's a sleight of hand. Uh, if you've ever been to court, you have a court case, that's a CUSIP number. If you have a birth certificate, which all of us do, there's a CUSIP number on there. They use these to trade you online. You've been traded by Driver's license, marriage license. Uh, if you've got any Probably certificates or, or or anything that you've earned in, in one of their schools, what it does is it ups the value on you as a slave, okay? It adds to your, uh, what they call siesta cave by uh, trust that they created or the investment they made through your birth certificate that they've been taking the returns on instead of giving the returns to you. So, I mean, it's all a game. And like as Tom says, it's all a sleight of hand. But it can all be undone. Also, I'd like to mention that, you know, all of the republics are in the uh, process of restoring themselves and receding themselves right now. So the people that are interested can go to uh, republic for the United States of America.org and do some research and look into that and find out what the Republic's about and the fact that um, they're trying to restore it, they're in the process of restoring it, and you can become a part of it. But um, that's up to you. How do you want to live? You want to live with some boot on the back of your neck? in tyranny or do you want to live free and you know i'd rather die free than, than live as a slave so that's the american spirit right there I, and the reality of it is if we lose our country if we lose america and believe me there's many people uh, across the pond overseas that are watching what happens here in america because they realize more than i think americans do if we lose our country, we lose the world. Yeah. 
And chances are we'll never get back again. So, and it is truly like Doug said, it's up to we the people. We the people are the law. We create the law. The law comes from us down to the government, not the other way around, which they've changed and flipped that paradigm. It's up, it's up to us to sw switch that paradigm back over and put us where we rightfully are with God at the top and us right below God. And it will take us learning, educating ourselves. And along with that, the fear just dissipates because once you know the truth and you know how to stand in your square, there's no reason to fear. Right. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll in, stop it, there. I'm sorry, Doug. No, we're in an, a little over an hour and I don't want to tax people's, uh, you know, uh, ability to take in this information because it's like drinking from a fire hose. And so, take it, take it, take it in chunks, right? Yeah. You can pause this and take notes. I would certainly encourage you to do that. Go do your own research. You will find very quickly what we're saying is true. Go to the Dun & Bradstreet, dnb.com, and just, it's simple. Just figured out how to look up a uh, Dun & Bradstreet number. This is where all these corporations are listed. And start putting in your courts and your counties and your cities all the way up the ladder, and you will find all of their Dun & Bradstreet numbers. I use them all the time, and I've got a thick file. So does Doug. So take your time, sip. Don't overwhelm yourself. Take it in. Go do some research. Prove it to yourself that what we're telling you is true. And then come back and continue listening. Don't shortcut it. There's no shortcuts here. And we'll be back again to talk to you uh, and continue moving forward beyond this. Hang tough. Yeah. Have a good day. Try and find some people in your neck of the woods to lock arms with and learn with. And it's an amazing road to be on. Any parting yeah. words, Doug? No, nah, it's just we're all we're all on a journey, and you know, it, it's like this: where you want to go on that journey. I mean, we've inherited something that's great. It's the best country and the best government in the world when it's operated right. But it's got to be operated by we the people. We we let the reins, you know. Sovereign is so over rain. You hold the reins to your destiny, bro, and. It's like this. If you want to give those reins up to somebody else, you're going to be led down the wrong path like we are now. So the American spirit still lives and the American dream is still alive in the minds of men. It's just we all have to come together and decide that we all want to go to the same place because we the people outnumber these people. Okay? They're nothing. All right? They've tricked us. They've deceived us. And, you know, right now, we're in a spiritual war for all the marbles. So, you know, figure out where you want to go on this journey because I'd like to see the journey end up in freedom and the restoration of what we inherited, which is a republic with a Republican form of government. God bless everybody. And uh, I look forward to uh, coming back and trying to give you a little bit more out of this fire hose. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon.